paranormal Karen. She's so spooky, paranormal Karen. Funny too, paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah, cha cha cha. So now I have to say something. Maybe it was the demons, or maybe there wasn't enough room on my SD card. You pick. Uh, I was in the middle of a story, and we, everything shut off. That uh, That's the kind of investigator you don't want to work with. Do you think it was demons? Do you think demons filled up the card, Tommy? Always. It's all, if you ask anybody out at any event, it usually is like, it's a demonic being. <laughs> you mean You mean the fact that you forgot to press record? I lost my files. What are you talking about? <laughs> See, now that sounds like something I would do. In fact, I remember the time I think I already told I apologize people if I already told the story but one time we were taking pictures and we had to go back and reconstruct the scene for an hour because I couldn't figure out what was in my picture it was the front of my shoe I had put my feet out in front of me hey, at least you figured it out I know I was right? like don't anybody move that's great investigating <laughs> and, and it was an extra hour people got to spend with you that's exactly awesome. Who, you know? a win-win quality time quality time um, so I uh, before uh, the demons cut us off mm-hmm. um, I did a Reiki session on a woman from Cuba and it turned out her grandfather was very involved in Santeria and was the clairvoyant for the town and you know when I do Reiki sometimes I see things Sometimes I see nothing. Sometimes it's just a Reiki session. But there seems to be a corner in my apartment that when I close my eyes, I can see something. She had a stack of people and some sort of, it looks like to me in my mind. All right, everybody go ahead and make fun of me. It looked like a big pterodactyl with like a long, like there was stuff watching out for her. And I was like, you, and she was like, oh, they gave me rings for the evil eye and this and that. But it was really amazing. Like I was overwhelmed. And then after it, I said, so, uh, did your, did you have, uh, Santeria in your family? And she was like, yes, we were, (laughs) my grandfather was like a priest or something. And I was like, well, I'm going to drive with you when I go through the vortex of hell. In yeah. my, you know. Always good to have that one friend who's uh, who's got the good Santeria juju. Yeah. So, uh, you know what? I wanted to do two different podcasts with you, but I think... We can th- come back to this later. We g- okay. You want to come back to this later? Well, we, I kind of want to go into this. We can write it down. We can, we can That's write right. or, or if you want, we can go into it. Okay. Um, I want to... Uh, Let's do it. Because like I am, I am literally the whitest guy to talk about Santeria ever. So, <laughs> uh, so I, we don't have to go. I, I don't know as much about it as I should. So I don't know if I want to go into it. Too well, you know, I'm hoping to get um, Joey Diaz on, who is a fabulous comic, but he's really popular. And I, we all had coffee once, and he was telling me his Santeria stories, and they were fabulous. So I want to get him because his whole family was into it, and he was. He has, not only does he have great stories, but he is, warns you, everybody, hmm. warns everybody. You got to know what you're doing. Don't, you know what yeah, I mean? It's, it's not, not I mean, none of this stuff is like dabbly. Like, I mean, Wicca is probably the lightest of all of the magical arts in a sense of like, it could still, you could still hurt yourself. You could still or, get or, a fairy or, attachment or doing a string spell. Oh, fairies. <laughs> oh, the fay folk. You know, I, well, that's, that's a, we'll get to that oh, in a second. Cause yeah. so I wanted to do one uh, interview with Tom that was about spiritual protection for empaths, which I think is probably going to be the most listened to because I'll send my clients to it all the time. But, and then I was like, let's do one that's kind of spooky. I think we stepped right into spooky. Do you want to just do the spooky first and then we'll do the empath? One yes. Right, and we'll I, the, the thing I want to start with that you brought up was ancestral um, protection and attachment. Mm-hmm. This is something people don't think about. Yeah, it's it, well, it's it, I mean, it's incredibly easy to miss because uh, even especially for I mean, not to not to box us in here, but dudes, uh, we don't tend to pay a lot of attention to our history till way later in life, and it's like, oh, we're getting older now. We want to know about our ancestry and, and all that. So, uh, you know, for me, I never found out until actually it was a uh, uh, John. I was talking to John Zaffis, who's a well-known demonologist and uh, awesome dude, really good guy. Uh, we were chatting on the phone, and he was talking about how he has family from Greece. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. I have family from Greece. And it was like, wait a minute. I wonder if somehow there's a connection because wow. we're both in the, in the work, right? And then you shouldn't date. If well, you're, I wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, no offense. John's not my type. Um, <laughs> and your wife would get pretty mad. Oh, uh, would she? Would she? I don't know. Uh, anyway... So, well, she's basically offloaded me for the last two months. I've been down here in L.A. Well, she's... So, she's, and Jen, anyway, right. Jen was from the Wolf Manor episode. So, Jen is another one of my Bettys, which is a term for besties. Oh, I love that. Bettys. Bettys. That's good. Um, so, you were in so, Greece. Yeah, so, John, yeah. So, uh, so we were we were 
chatting about that. And then I started doing some research and, and sure enough, like I found out that my great grandmother actually, um, before she came to America, even in Greece, she was known as the, the local witch or psychic and she would dispel negative energies and give people readings. And then when she came to America, uh, she dispelled negative entities and, and did readings, except she couldn't dispel my grandfather because, you know, uh, <laughs> she used to always say, you son of a bitch, you son of a bitch. <laughs> apparently, apparently he wasn't the greatest guy. I didn't get to know him too well. Um, but yeah, so it, I found out that the work and, and that this sort of um, dealing with these energies is in the family. And then I found out also through all this conversation with my family that, oh, there was a lot of activity that my family had experienced, which sided on the demonic or non-human malevolent. I don't like using the word demonic because I don't believe they're Let's all drop Judeo-Christian. It, yeah. so, we'll go malevolent. But like malevolent spirit um, manifestations had happened to them. And it's like, oh, man, so this shit just fo- – oh, sorry, can I – Oh, you can swear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This just follows you uh, from life, you know, for, from your generations, from, from, from grandparents to parents to you. It, like this stuff can track you. And I had seen this in cases before where people had had stuff in the family lines or uh, generational uh, hauntings and, and to realize like, oh man, in my family too, that, that that's a really big awakening to have. Wow. And, and, and we're going to hold that note. Cause I, um, and t- I run everything by Tommy anyways, Tommy and Jen. Um, I had a, can someone, I had a client and he had said to me something about, um, he had a, uh, he was from, I can't remember if he was from Japan or China. Um, but he had a uncle who was in jail now, but had, they said he used to move things with his mind and he was in the very dark arts. And I kind of got a bad feeling. Can, if that uncle dies, can whatever he's attracted pass on to this guy? Uh, yeah, it's entirely possible for sure. I mean, like rare, but well, it depends on. It also depends on the contract or deal that this guy made with the forces he's working with, too. Like how that goes into a whole thing of like, if this person made a deal, like like if you're dealing with um, Middle Eastern tradition, the jinn, they they uh, people can marry their living daughters or even sons to the jinn. Uh, they can make deals and barter with the jinn for certain things. Like, oh, I would like you know, all this money, but you always have to pay the piper at the end. So whatever that deal is, uh, sometimes it was handing off family members for marriage to that. And then people like, I, I've had several clients that have talked to me about, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm from Iran or from Iraq or somewhere out there and have had super bad luck with relationships and I can't keep anyone around. There's all this manifesting that happens, uh, when I am dating somebody and, come to find out it's like oh yeah well my grandfather my aunt or whomever promised me to the jinn because you know oh. they were they were looking for something and, and people that um for a quick reference jinn are really middle eastern demons right well uh, not quite i know we're throwing that word around easily we, we, uh i would i would say they are sentient beings that are as far as i can tell dave and i've done a lot of research dave harvey and i've done a lot of research into them uh, the earliest stuff we find goes back to ancient Sumeria and Assyria. Wow. So their belief in them, they didn't use the same name, but the descriptions of what these entities were doing and what they were was very similar to later descriptions we saw. So they've been around for a while. And now I have to look up sentient. Sentient? <laughs> Sen- sentient, meaning it has it has uh, uh, the ability to think and and. Uh, act on its own free will. Oh, and um, so it doesn't mean they're all bad. Doesn't mean they're all good. I mean, it could be just like your a hole uncle, or it could just be like your neighbor who fabulous. doesn't care about yeah. you, uh, or yeah, maybe a fabulous friend. I mean, they're they're all different. But I mean, generally, I only get the calls for the ones where people are concerned because it's it's terribly frightful, and their manifesting ability is is above anything else I'd ever seen. Really? There is a, um, and uh, also for people, a reference, if you're um, not into the paranormal, it's also uh, the genie in the bottle. Yeah. That was sort of where that uh, Aladdin the and Lamb. three wishes and all that. That's, that's all Jin energy that have, uh, you know, been passed down through traditions. It's not as cute as Robin Williams voicing a giant blue genie <laughs> right. from Aladdin. But um, They don't sing? Not usually? I don't know, Maybe. I've, they, never, I've uh, never heard one. I've heard screaming. I've heard that. Oh, but I've really? Never heard, I've never heard singing. But yeah, it's like, again, it, 
a lot of this stuff, you're never going to believe it until you witness it. And, and I said the same thing with the fairies. I, I did not believe in the fey folk until I experienced it. And it was like, well, holy, sh- I am so sorry. I did not understand that this was real. Okay. The list, just so you know, folks, I have a list in front of me of what we're going to go back because I know how freaking interesting Tommy is. So uh, we're going back a second. Uh, so a contract with a gin, uh, harder to get out of than a timeshare? <laughs> uh, I don't know. The contracts for timeshares are pretty bad. Awful. Yeah, Awful. I, I mean, these days it's it's pretty hard. I mean, or a contract with my employer, my current employer is like that. Too. Oh, God. And oh, you know, I didn't even give you a proper intro. Tommy works on Ice Road Truckers. Not anymore, right? I don't think the show Oh, it's over now. Yeah, I think it's over. But I, and, and like I keep saying, hopefully, you know, Paranormal Caramel show. Um, I would love that. I Paranormal know Car- you and me. I want to travel. Out with looking you. for sentient beings um, <laughs> to tell jokes. Um, so, uh, and he does. And wait, let's step. Now I'm going to plug you in the middle of the show because uh, I'm so excited. Um, you also a great documentarian. Did I say that right? Documentarian. Sure. I mean, a filmmaker, documentarian. Filmmaker, documentarian. And moving up to Washington, if anyone needs an awesome producer, don't director, cameraman, what don't you do? I, I, uh, I don't do visual effects very well. Oh. I can do them. Which reminds me, I, I'm doing a, for people that watch the web series, Paranormal Karen, the one minute web series, I have started an animated Mothman series <laughs> and okay, I don't know how to excited. animate. <laughs> it's going to be great. Oh my God. That's amazing. Is it anything <laughs> like the eye of uh, who's in what's it? We had the, instead of the eye of Horace for protection, I had the eye of Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. That's <laughs> and, <laughs> which um, now see. Only you can get away with that too. <laughs> yes. It finds me inspirational blackmail rules, but I never use it because I don't need that. So um, you, uh, you know, my head, see, I'm going to have to remember to keep all these things in place Um, because we're also going to go back to your childhood, which is fascinating. But when I was doing, I'm watching all this Mothman stuff, which, by the way, is still my favorite, my favorite. Yeah, he's the best. And um, but I'm watching all these different documentaries and there was. This one, these two guys that walked up, that, that actually had it walk up to them, like in they they were describing how it was walking to them. They were in this, the warehouse at the TNT area, and it walks. Up, and I'm sitting in my mind, I would do anything to see that. And then I'm thinking, maybe I don't want to see that. Like it, like do you want to see it? No, because it changes your consciousness of everything, doesn't yes, it? Yes, because uh, what most people don't realize is when you when you don't physically see them, there's there's still a barrier when you look through your quote unquote mind's eye, right? There's still a part of your brain that logically says, eh, you could be making this shit up. Mm -hmm. As soon as it physically manifests, and I've had this happen a handful of times, it it completely changes your perception of everything. Because then it, like, you you just, you understand how real it all is. And how little we are. Yeah, comparatively, or, or our abilities are in comparison. Or, you know, yeah, because it's so much ego, and I just, uh, when... Oh, yeah, I, that's the problem with demonology. Like, uh, that's why I don't like to use that term so much, because a lot of these people think they're God's gunslinger, going to go in, get uh, me some demons, and cast you out. And it's like, <laughs> listen, you, we, you, first of all, aren't the one doing any of the work. Like, you can know tools, you can know the trade, you can know different ways of manifesting or manipulating energy, what have you, but you are still just a human, right. and you are still not nearly as old or clever as these things. So you really just have to work on your divine intervention skills, like being able to say, all right, someone help me out because wow. we want to help this family. But I, I know it's it's not me that's going to be doing the work. Wow. that See, fascinating right there. And also, your, um, I think ego is everything. I just heard somebody on a radio show the other day say how he was teaching teens to cast out the demons, which number one, yeah, I just, Tommy's eyes just popped out of his head. Um, but number what? what, what? I know. But number two, I don't, I don't like the odds that I'm going to run in a demon, even in show business are so rare. Like, don't you think everybody's putting everything in one category? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I, I mean, yeah, I'd be more afraid of the living than, than the dead in general. But I mean, these entities are incredibly rare to come across. Most of the time it's just human spirit or, or what I call elemental spirit, which are, they're not human, but they're not, you know, out to get you, you know? Right. And most things that go on in a house that scare people are minimal. Like, uh, like what is John? I actually, um, not John, but the Warrens, the Warrens have some excellent books out. If you're, if Mm -hmm. you're, and I don't know, you know, I take, I, I don't, 
I guess you should take everything with a grain of salt, but I enjoy it, so I don't. I enjoy listening to their books, yeah. and they made a very specific thing about human spirits can only move like two pounds. Well, I mean, I don't know if I buy the giving it a precise thing. There is a, I find, in my experience, I found that to be, yeah, lighter objects, stuff that generally is below five pounds. Um, not to say that they can't if they're angry enough or have enough energy or... Um, specifically if there's somebody who worked with energy on the living side of things like, you know, Santeria or uh, the occult, uh, you know, any sort of belief system, Gnosticism, whatever. Um, so I mean that it's possible they can do more. It's just less likely. And I'm always like, why? I mean, we can ask this question in general, but I'm so fascinated with the afterlife. Why would somebody hang around here? I know there's people that either, there, some people might be ashamed that they don't want to see God because they don't think they lived as well as they should. Why do teens hang around a mall? Well, clothes. Oh <laughs> no, no, just well, because, just because it's familiar. I, I think a lot of it is familiarity. Um, a lot of it is they felt maybe that they had more control when they were here because that's you know a, a hang up that doesn't always go when you die. But I, it could also. I mean, there's so many factors. Like there's so many possibilities. Like maybe unfinished business, maybe looking over a family member that's passed on. And then once that person passes on, they forget. It's, um, there was actually, it's an incredibly insightful film, but it's really cheesy, uh, called, I think it was, um, a ghost story came out recently, 2017. And that film, it portrayed a, a, a man who died and I forget who it was played by. Oh, I started this. No spoilers, right? No spoilers. Okay. But basically, um, this gentleman dies and he stays around afterwards because of uh, uh, the love of his life. And so, uh, not to give any more away, it's like that was a very insightful movie in a lot of ways because I, I feel like the writers did a fair amount of research on why the deceased stay around and what kind of happens over time because it, it felt very genuine. Even though it was all shrouded in this more to, more of like a uh, kitschy kind of a... a you know, independent film. <laughs> well, it did. I started this and I will go back and watch it now, but I have to say, obviously it wasn't that good. Uh, well, no, what happened was I think I was having a bad day, which is pretty, uh, it was frequent. And, uh, I started it and like they, for the first 10 minutes of the film, they had the worst music too loud continuously. Like it yeah. didn't stop. Yeah. And I was like, I can't take that. Yeah, and I the, figured the, it must have stopped was, somewhere. No, it really? kind of continues. That theme goes on the whole time, but, uh, yeah, I agree. Maybe maybe the score wasn't uh, wasn't the best. I think the guy started giving piano lessons in the middle of the film. It just went on or and taking on. Taking them, <laughs> taking them. Yes, it was something like that. So okay, so now um, so I think I, it was Casey Affleck. I think that was the actor. Oh, was it? I started it, and I you know I'm always open to start it, but I think I I'll go back because it was a little because I also did not care for the first Game of Thrones, and now I'm all in. I, you know, I, I was in and then I saw the red wedding and I watched a little bit past that. And I'm like, you know, I don't like anyone who's left. Oh, and it was so hard for me to keep watching. I can't remember if, uh, yeah, you know, that's a new thing in films and movies is no good people. Nobody worth. I like, uh, not to get, we're totally off topic here, but, <laughs> but to, to talk about a show that did that really well is, uh, I was just talking about this with friends, six feet under oh. the show, six feet under was a in my opinion, one of my favorite shows start to finish story and character wise and, and how they paced it out and how they ended it best series finale of any show ever. But everybody at some point becomes unlikable, but then other people become more likable. And so you have this trade off with who you're rooting for, but you're still always in Right. when you have, there's certain parts of breaking bad where I was like, I hope everybody dies. I right. He got so bad. Yeah. People. Everyone, everyone in that, in that show got bad at some point. You're like, I hope they all just go. It's like, <laughs> so, I mean, that was harder to, to push through, I think, than, than six feet for me, even though six feet was really depressing, but it, uh, oh. yeah, beautiful show start to finish. I, uh, I just read, watched the shield again, all bad. Loved it. Well, not all bad. There were some good side characters, but really you're rooting for a bad cop. Um, so, okay. So, so now, it's basically like living in Los Angeles. Right. Sorry, well, guys. it was based on Rampart. Remember oh, Rampart? Yeah. Yeah, it was based on that. And um, uh, so now let's go back because we were talking about ancestors and your ancestors, which is very interesting because I don't um, – I, I – 
I feel like when people say, what is my purpose in life? It's kind of not always up to us to know or to answer. Like my purpose might be to make people laugh, but there's a bigger vibrational purpose. And so I don't want to say your purpose was to be involved in this, but you sort of stepped right into it for, as a kid, didn't you? Uh, well, I, I mean, I started by seeing dead people when I was a kid without having any, I, it's not like I had a choice in the matter. And did um, somebody tell you they weren't there, or was was everybody kind of cool with that? Oh no, no, no! There was a lot of like, "You're full of it. Stop it." Ugh. Um, and which was fine. Look, because uh, when you're scared shitless as a child, and you're like, <laughs> "This is ridiculous." Like, not that it was all bad, but uh, there were plenty of times where I was scared to death. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you you hit a certain point where it's actually almost better to feel like, okay, maybe it's not real. Maybe it's not real. And you ignore it for a while. Right. And then you turn all your stuff off by doing that. So like for a while I was shut down and then I sort of re emerged in a spiritual sense, uh, when I was about 16, 15, 16. And then that's when I just started embracing it. Wow. And did, uh, was there something about finding things around the area where you lived? Was there something telling you about things around your, your area? Well, I mean, there was a lot of weird sh- yeah. Stuff. You can swear all you I want. Don't know. I can, I can, God damn it. Let it go. I gotta Let get it out of the habit. It's a bad habit. <laughs> um, too many years with truckers. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it, like, there was all kinds of weird stuff that it ha- had always happened on that property. Like, there was a super massive rattlesnake that had cornered a girl up on the property just above where my parents were. And then that house burnt to the ground. Uh, I, I don't remember if anyone died in in the fire, but then that place lay dormant forever. Then somebody got stuck in the well up there. And then, wow, did Lassie like, help you with the boy in the well? I wish no, I didn't have a Lassie. Oh, we had cows. I, I don't think that, really. I, don't, I didn't where, know you were that much of a hillbilly. Oh yeah, in New Hampshire, we're straight up, right? Oh yeah, straight up. There's wow. I always tell people there's two New Hampshires. There's like the Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts people, or not Maine, uh, Connecticut, Massachusetts people Hamptons. that come up and they're like, yes, yeah, so we're gonna get our lank house. It's gonna be very. <laughs> <laughs> Very beautiful. We love it up here in New Hampshire. So quaint. And then you have uh, the rest of us who were like, yeah, I'm going to go tap this maple tree for syrup, and then we're going to raise our cows and, you know, try not to shoot each other when we get drunk. You know, like part of the thing with Durant parties was, uh, you know, if we'd go like my uncle's pig roast. And I, I, by the way, I love my family, so this is not a knock to them. This is like, I'm super proud of this. Like we go to pig roast up at my uncle's house and uh, you know, one of the things is we drink a bunch and then people would start shooting arrows and, you know, then there was like dumping eels into the pool or wow. like a family fight would happen almost every time and the cops would get called and it's like, ah, Durant party. That's how it goes. So <laughs> what are dumping eels in the pool? Real eels? Yeah. 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 Cause you oh, use in them the for swimming bait. pool. Yeah. Cause you use them, you use them for bait. Oh, but then wow. if you want to scare your cousins, you drop, drop the eels in the pool. Oh my they're God. I've heard them. They're eels. They're little, they're just little guys. Yeah. But man, that must've been the a little thing. squiggly thing with my hand. Like you guys can see that. I but. think the whole wilderness would get quiet and go, Oh no, the Durants are having a family gathering. Everyone. Yeah. Hold I mean, on. the only ones worse than us were the, uh, the family down the street, the Webster's, they, they threw bigger parties and had the cops there way more than us. So oh, it was good. Good. So All we right. weren't the worst ones. No, you saved face. on. Yeah. That. Um, damn Webster's. Um, I would love them. <laughs> you, um, so now you told me about your first experience when a guy said, yeah, let's go paranormal investigating. Oh, it, your first thing you really saw. It wasn't my first experience. It or was, was your um, first? Cause I was working with a, a, uh, Wiccan, uh, I don't know what you call her. I'd, I'd say wannabe priestess or something. She, she was a, a spiritual practitioner, but. Uh, she followed more of the Wicked Path, and I worked with her for a little bit and, and saw some kind of weird stuff again. But then uh, after going to college, I, so I had been in the field doing stuff for a while, but then my buddy in college, he was a straight-up occultist. He's an awesome dude, like most knowledgeable encyclopedia of the occult wow. uh, that I've ever met to this day in my life. And so Anthony's like, hey, uh, got some friends that conjured something, want to go put it back. You want to come with? And I'm like, wait a minute. What? Sure. <laughs> I'm like, why not? What the hell? Right. Cause I, I mean, I had been working on myself and, and testing myself and, uh, trying to fortify my abilities. And, you know, they, it seemed like they really needed help from what he was saying. And, and he doesn't usually offer his, his help for anyone unless there's a real reason for it. Cause he's, he keeps to himself mostly, uh, as most occultists do. And so we decided to go. So we went. And a call to people does not mean just dark. It no, just no, no, means... no, no. It's just, it's just, it's just using information, uh, hidden information or ancient information of it's the same as anything else. It's just manipulating energies using 
uh, spells, sigils, or It's not prayers. always calling up demons. It's yeah. not always conjuring, although they did, which was, I found out later when I got there. Um, the Websters? No, not the Websters, <laughs> okay. surprisingly. I don't think they'd know how to do that. Uh, yeah, so it, it was really it was really funny because like, I, I show up and, and just you walk into the apartment or the condo we were at, and immediately, I'd never felt this before where I literally was near vomiting just uh. in the door. It's like, oh, this is unpleasant. And we start walking in, and that's when I see the walls start bulging out, and it bulges out in the shape of a face, and it's about three or four feet. It, it's like the, it's almost like the whole wall came out, and it looked like a face. And I turn, and I look, and I see it. I'm like, uh, Anthony? And he's like, just ignore it. Keep walking. Just ignore it. I'm like, it. what the <laughs> shit, man? Really? Like, so that was that was sort of my introduction. And, and it, it got kind of hairier from there, but in the end, everyone was okay. Yeah. And uh, the, the thing no longer was uh, causing problems, which was good. See, yeah. now they always say uh, the friend is the one that helps you bury the bodies. I think the friend is the one that helps you put back something you conjured. Sure. I we mean, conjured something up. Can you help us put it back? Yeah, they definitely, I'll be honest, those, those kids that we helped out, I call them kids, they were probably older than me at the time, but uh, definitely dumb as a sack of hammers. And so, would they do it again? Oh, I'm, I'm without a doubt sure that they would at least consider it at some point. Although by the end of the night, one of them had been taken out, like completely passed out, um, and was, you know, sick after she got back up. The other two were so scared. I don't, I don't know if they would have done it readily, but then again, who knows what the uh, next few months of alcohol binging would have done for them to, right. But, you know, what else I find people do is the further away from the happening, the more they go, well, you know what? Wait it wasn't a minute. That bad. It's it like wasn't childbirth. Bad. It's like childbirth, right? Yeah, it wasn't like, that bad. All these, all these women say childbirth is the worst pain ever, which I don't disagree with. Probably is. I wouldn't want to imagine that. Right. Um, but for some reason, after like uh, not even a year, half the time, they're I, ready I to hear, have another one. Yeah, all my friends uh, are like, yeah, so I think we're having another one. It's like, what? Whoa, whoa, Wait, what but... happened to the pain you said? <laughs> oh, that's what the epidurals were for. It's like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, now, do you know what they did to conjure that? Not specifically, yeah. but what did they? Yeah, I mean, they were, they, so they were uh, Luciferians, which there's a difference. There's Satanists and Luciferians. Uh, I always felt that there's a distinction between them because technically they're two different beings. But uh, Luciferians, study lucifer as the the morning star the the light of god just as he had fell but still giving him respect and and treating him as a deity of sorts and all it was is that was their main deity of focus but they're they're occultists so they were using different magical practices capitalistic practices and decided they were going to conjure because like part of initiation for some uh sex of not sex, but sects. <laughs> sex. <laughs> sects. Uh, Thank God we did a sound check um, earlier. <laughs> sects of, of uh, magical practices. Part of what you do is you conjure things to be able to put them back away to prove that you've advanced or you've hit a certain level or you have a control over your abilities. Wow. And this is talked about one of my favorite books ever is the book of Abra Marilyn the Mage which is a wonderful text for anyone who's looking to get into occultism or to study uh, spiritual practices that are a little bit more heady, ritual, magic-based uh, stuff. But one of the things he says is, oh, yeah, you create this safe room, conjure them, put them back in, conjure them, put them back in. And you go through the list so you're just aware of what the energies are, what they feel like, what it does to you, what you can learn from them, and then you put them back in the bottle. Well, and that like, sounds so easy. Well, but... I mean, but, but there's the book goes through a series of protocols. Like it's an insane amount of protocols to uh, get there. So that's a big part of it is like you read all the stuff to get to that point. And then he says, dude, I, I'm not, I, look, I don't like to try my luck again. Like I said earlier, they're smarter than me. They're older. Yeah. Than me. I would never I, do this. I'm not going to purposefully try to do this because that's dumb. And I would see, I want information, but I don't want to do it. I don't yeah. need to see it. Well, there's it. other ways to get it. I mean, you yeah. do tarot. That's a great way to do it. I use tarot. I think that's a wonderful way to do it. I've, I've actually done scrying and done safely. Scrying is fine. You just have to know what you're doing and have your protections and, and call in all your you know guardians and all that. And Which is the next show we're doing, protections. Yes. Yeah. So if you listen to the next show... I'm not saying go scry because it's it's a poor idea if you're not well studied. But uh, you know, scrying can be safe if if done appropriately. And well, that's what they say about Ouija boards. But I still have no interest in Ouija boards. Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of the Ouija. Yeah, it just my my uh, tarot teacher board. 
Yeah, she she just always said it's such a it sends out such a low vibration that it calls to lower things. Yeah, there's no yeah. there's no point. Like uh, the reason I like scrying is because that's what Nostradamus did. Oh wow, he's a scrying artist. So part of what he did was he had a whole ritual that he went through uh, hmm. to get prepared for it, cleaning himself, um, using certain types of incense, and uh, using his ritual robes would go up. He'd scry into the black obsidian mirror give his quatrains, which a number of which have come to pass and then go about his merry business after his ritual was closed. So uh, nobody does quatrains anymore. <laughs> it's really, well, that's a good point. I mean, it's almost like poetry, right? Right. It's Cause like it is Shakespeare of the day. It's very, it's very interesting and, and, and hard to, and hard to read. So, uh, so we have that you it's have like the a ben- limerick, right? And it, you have to, it leaves a lot open to interpretation, but I wonder if when he was doing them, they weren't like those people got it. It would be like if we gave slang now in a hundred years, people might go, what is this mysterious? I, I, see, I think because having done scrying and, and done a lot of different divination work, part of what I feel happens is stuff comes through in pieces. You're only getting mm-hmm. bits and pieces of things. And so like, especially with scrying, you're seeing an image and you're trying to translate that image into something that makes sense. And even if you write it, in the moment, it doesn't mean it's going to make sense when it comes to pass later. Like there's going to be elements from that image right. that you may have missed or things that stood out that, that maybe are different. So it's not, it, I don't want to say it's not an exact science because it's not a science at all, but it's, it's really just something that no matter how much you do it, there's a certain amount of interpretation when you're looking at it, just like a tarot card. Right. Like there's so many symbols in a tarot card that just because you're reading it one way doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to hit the symbolism that's meant for the client that time. And you know what? Sometimes it works the opposite. I had a woman that um, sometimes I'll do a whole reading and I'll think, I said to her, I said, I'm sorry. I said, if you would like your money back, I don't know what I'm talking about. And she goes, oh, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. Keep going. So it meant something to her. And, and there is, it is, people want it to be perfect. People want it to be, um, I always laugh because, um, Penn and Teller always, or Penn always says, uh, if psychics could predict the future, why didn't they call George Bush about nine 11? And I always think, well, if he missed the memo on his desk that said Bin Laden wants to attack the Twin Towers, I don't think they're going to listen to a psychic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, but I always think, it's not an exact science and there has to be some wiggle room and there's yeah. free will. Yeah, exactly. And that changes everything too. Right. Right. I had, in fact, a very interesting, another lady I read for, we were talking a lot about something in her childhood and she wasn't saying anything. And so I kind of said to my guides uh, and her guides, I said, uh, what is this incident we're talking about? And um, did, are we still on? Okay. And they told me it was none of my business. And I told her, I go there, and she laughed like, "Yeah, I didn't want you to know what we're talking about." So, yeah, <laughs> so good for you. Something made a, a ding. Oh, you know what? It's the three hundred and sixty camera. Okay, we got a three hundred and sixty camera. Did it turn off? Is that what happened here? What if I do this? Now it's recording again. So okay. I take it. I take it. It only does. Uh, I'm, I'm testing out a three hundred and sixty camera because as part of my uh, production company that I have with my friend Gwen Morreale. Um, we're delving into doing internet-based content for people and also 360 content for businesses and for uh, training professionals. I'm actually oh, working with a friend of mine back east on that. And so this is something we're, we're testing out is uh, doing this and, and seeing how the graphics can be added in and things like that to, to try to you know make a viable business for it and also help some of our friends. So maybe if Karen wants to put 360 video out of yeah. the podcast, then we'll have some. So. I'll have to brush my hair, though. Uh, we will put some out. I should have brushed my teeth. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm drinking a blueberry smoothie. Believe me, my mouth is probably all blue anyways. Um, it looks like, you know what the camera looks like? It looks like uh, that movie where, um, what's his name, Will Smith, all the robots turned oh, into iRobot. iRobot. It looks like a little iRobot. You know, that was my first um, first sort of thing I worked on kind of when I was out here in LA. Oh really? Yeah. So well, that production company that did, did all the effects uh, or did majority of the effects. I, I was there for a little bit, which is nice. Wow. So, um, okay. So Not we're going to, I know people are like, Karen, get back to it, get back to it. He's so interesting. Okay. So we went to your trial. Now no, when we talk, when we talk about, um, 
the um, span of there's a human goes to this and this and this. Like we spoke a minute about fairies, which everyone, I'm going to get you my fairy story when I tell it in front of a funny audience in Australia. I don't tell it too much in America. I don't know that. I don't know that everyone gets it, but I'll pay it for the podcast. That'll be a podcast or a bonus. But I really, we were. Well, I mean, they really don't get the fairies here in America. No, I, and, I, I would. I, I would think that the UK that would go over really well if you ever did a show there. Well, you know what is funny at us when I was at the Australia Paracon, what I found was I think they. Um, like this country used to be like, everybody's a skeptic. Nobody wants to talk about ghosts. We don't say we believe in them. And there was like four or five people that was like, yeah, I believe in everything. And now it's kind of swung. There's a bigger, there's a wider berth of what you can get away with before people call you crazy. And I think over there, they, even though I know some of them believed, they still were holding that. I don't really believe. I don't really believe. So they, but I think a friend, um, described me and my story as he said he finds me to be um uh insanely credible like i'm telling an insane I, you know, story but he's like it's so credible when you tell it i i got the same thing the reason i appeared on unsealed <laughs> alien files and conspiracy files was my friend called me she's a producer she was a producer on the show and she's like so we've been going through some of your leads and we've got some great people to talk to but Everyone sounds really crazy, mm -hmm. and you're the most credible, crazy person I know. Can you please come on the show? It's like, yeah, all right, yeah. I guess and, I can. And, and it's so, I guess, but what I'm going to give a thumbnail sketch, and then you can tell me how it went, um, what you did on your part, and how you're. Um, we were here, I used to have people over here, and we did mm -hmm. a. Um, and there's this something that you do this all the time, and it's so funny. I hear stories about people you do this all the time. So we had a wick, and she was sort of our speaker, and she wanted everyone to do a little string fairy spell with mm -hmm. chocolate. And you said, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. Or you said, uh, one line, this isn't a good idea. And then everyone yeah. was like, Oh, this is fine. What are you, yeah, yeah. And, and you always <laughs> let people get into their own trouble. Because I can't stop anyone. Right. But now, see, That's now you learn. when you're like, I'm not going to have the fish, I'm like, what's wrong with the fish? <laughs> you know, we're at a restaurant, what's wrong? Um, but, and I hear everyone tell their story where Tommy just said, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And that was it. But you do, but that's the learning curve. So I ended up with this. Hopefully it always ends up that I was fairly accurate. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> In fact, we joke, we always joke because it was so funny because people don't realize you're like six foot. And you're like, yeah. you're like a big guy. You're a man, man with the a beard bearded. and you can always hear him go, I hate fairies. And we always <laughs> laugh, it's, but, but it's, it's, it's so, I, no, fairies cause a lot of trouble. They um, are, they're troublesome. They are. And you know what? I think this is weird because Jen, your wife, whenever she does Reiki on me, mm -hmm. she always says that, um, because I'm such a loner, that was my last life too. And that I was the medicine woman or something like that. I was always alone. And, um, I think I worked with fairies because I had the weird fairy thing. Mm -hmm. I have the weird fairy obsession. And now I have the obsession with playing with the harp, which I did not know attracts fairies. Mm -hmm. They love the harp. They get mad if you stop playing mm -hmm. it. Except for me, because I don't really know how to play it. And they're like, please, you're not doing it Please any stop. justice. Put it down. <laughs> but I but I really well, so it doesn't help that it's out of tune, Karen. It's I know. It's your fault. <laughs> maybe they're gonna maybe they're gonna come tune it for me. Well, those would be good fairies. I'm not and, and again, I'm not saying they're all bad. Just when you look historically at these different entities. I, I mean, look, I, I hate to stereotype things, but there's a reason why some stereotypes exist. You know, mm -hmm. most most mass murderers are white dudes, middle aged, like myself. Great example. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's like there's there's definitely like a reason why we should look at history and see what happened before and read the stories because that tells you where it's going to go. Probably right. and most likely. And Disney uh, captures the ideas of fairies. And then we think, Oh, it's ridiculous. It's like, what are they talking about a cartoon? So I had, and this was the change that took place in me. I became very, very depressed, like more depressed than ever and angry. And my friend um, finally was, she's a comedian, um, and she finally, comedian Cindy Burns, uh, she said, there's something really wrong with you. There's something really wrong with you. And I was like, there's nothing wrong with me, nothing wrong with me, which is the first clue that there's something wrong when someone goes, there's nothing wrong. And, um, it ended up, I ended up getting a call from Sonia, animal communicator, who said, courage says you have a very bad attachment. So, and I'm not even going to, I'm going to tell you the story, but it's a hysterical story that goes through the dog and through the, 
<laughs> and through my cat. And through your cat. But you, when I first went over there, I know you were kind of like, you said to me, that I don't, I'm not sure there's nothing moving here. There's nothing. And then it kind of all happened at once. Mm-hmm. And what, uh, if you could tell me anything about the process or what you used, and then we did Reiki and we had tea and blah, blah, blah. Important tea, though, not just tea. We didn't just well, have tea. Well, yeah, the tea, the tea was specifically designed for uh, sort of cutting attachments, but... Uh, I'll be honest, Karen. I do so many cases and help so many. You people. can't remember. I, I I remember. I remember. She, the lady here, put pennies in with the chocolate, oh. which was because shiny. You like you offer the Fay folk shiny things because um, they they love shiny things for some reason. Certain type of Fay. And folk I remember the chocolate changed color yes. the next day. Yeah, the chocolate. The chocolate immediately went bad. Which I mean, look, maybe it was a chemical reaction from the copper and the pennies. I don't know, but it went. There bad was fast. a very quick noticeable change in that, and and meanwhile, I'm sitting back saying, oh, I still don't think that was a good idea, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, and then. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, you like months later, I, I'm coming back from a wolf sanctuary, to, which is what my demonologist does. I don't know what yours does. Yeah. Mine's at a wolf sanctuary on a yeah, Sunday. Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, we were there uh, filming for a documentary I started back then. Oh my god, it's been that long ago. I know, but and Aww. what's the documentary? So they can. It's not out so, yet, but uh, Freedom of the Pack dot com. Freedom of the Pack dot com. That's a documentary. So it's about wolf protections. Anyway, totally, totally sidetracked. That's another part of my life. Um, <laughs> So we were coming back from filming the day at the sanctuary and get a call from Karen. And it's like, okay, well, uh, it's 11 o'clock. So sure. Come on over. And, and even better, you go, are right, you going to need some Palo Santo? Cause I yeah. know you and Jen are like, really? She's calling us at 11 o'clock to tell us something's attached. What the hell is going on? And so I call you 15 minutes later and you're like, where did you get Palo Santo at 11 o'clock? And yeah. I was like, psychic guy, they were open. I ran. That's down. amazing. Yeah. So that uh, plug for the psychic guy being open at 11 o'clock. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so then we got together, and uh, I remember, yeah, you came over to the apartment. We were on, we were in, yeah, that condo in Burbank. And you didn't do a lot. Didn't like, here's to. the thing. You didn't. Because okay. it didn't follow you in. Like, a lot of times, so when I, when I get into a place, it. I do a lot of protection on the place to stop things from coming in. It, I almost call it like a, uh, it's almost like a, a sifting net so to speak, the way I, I do my protection on my apartment. And again, for those of you who don't believe in any of this, uh, you think I'm full of shit and that's fine. But for everyone who knows me and knows what I do, they're like, oh yeah, you always walk in. It's like a sanctuary in Tom's place. Yeah. So um, Karen came in, felt fine, knew there was a little funk. Cause I, I think I remember we were talking about your aura being a little funky. And then uh, all I remember is my cat solved the problem. Your cat came in and you, and you go, your cat walked in and you go, Oh my God, everything, cause you were going, Karen, I don't think there's anything. Maybe she'll get Sonia on the phone. I don't know what's going on. Your cat walked in and you go, Oh my God, the energy, everything just changed. Yeah. And I dropped, I felt like I dropped an inch. Like I, like I went down an inch, something. I don't know why it would drop instead of lift up, but I did. But you, I remember, cause I remember thinking, Tom's going to think I'm crazy. And then you go, Oh, it's here. Well, I know you're crazy. That's different. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, but, but that was, and that was the moment. Like Oreo came in and he's sort of my familiar in this uh, scheme of things. And so, or maybe I'm his familiar for all I know. So Oreo came in and yeah, the energy shifted and then it was like, oh, now I know what's going on. And it, and we were able to, the tea was, um, God, I feel like it was a little bit of cedar fir, sage and bay leaf and rosemary. Right, I think so. I yeah. wear a lot of rosemary now, just for which are good. I mean, those are all good hair. protection. Good for really? thinning hair too. Yeah. Oh, I need I need to lather my head in that. Then <laughs> it's all growing on my face, not on the top of my head anymore. So we did that tea for you. We did do some dragon's blood in the apartment, and I feel like we did an anointing oil for you too. That could have been, but for people that are getting anything done. This is a weird thing, but Tom only touched my back once when he gave me Reiki on this. So if you got somebody weird that's trying to do, you know what I mean? Little warning. Yeah. I mean, you don't ha- I, Everybody does it differently. Everyone but- does it differently. Like my wife likes to do Reiki where she's hands on. I don't actually, I, I'm a Reiki master, but I don't do Reiki. So it was just, it was just energy transference. That's all that was. I was just transferring energy to you to help clean out. Because again, I, if anyone who thinks they're a demonologist and they don't realize they're just a channel for other energies. They're full of shit and just don't pay them any money and go away. So, uh, yeah, basically what it came down to was I realized, let me just try to push some of the energy through. And I think we, we did that. And then you came home and got rid of that 
chingadero there that was hanging up with the chocolate, right? You know, I think I had gotten rid of it earlier, but I know... Because I remember we talked about that. You put it in red cloth like we had talked about. Oh, that was the mirror. Oh, that was a mirror? That was oh, a I mirror. you did that with the chocolate, too. Well, the chocolate, I think, I'm not sure, but here's where the fairy thing went bad, is... I was met after the couple of days after this, I started meditating and I said to someone, I said that is a medium that doesn't really know these things. I said, I, this is the craziest thing. Every time I meditate, there's a big bunny standing in front of me. And I said, it's ridiculous, but I cannot get this vision out of my head. And she said, Oh, that's a puka. You should talk to it, which gave it the invitation to oh, attach. Lovely. Yeah. And, yeah. And for those of you who don't understand, um, sort of the rules of malevolent spirit there generally is a uh, invitation stage which allows it to start manifesting or attach itself to you or in, enter your home and then from there it goes to infestation where things get bad and then oppression which is where karen got to where the thing was uh, attached to her and, and using her life force as a, a food source like a tropicana box mm. or a capri sun a capri sun still around i think yeah, i so prefer it's like a capri, capri go with sun, coconut oil coconut milk but do they have pouches that have the straws you have oh, to? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's oh, what yeah. it was. It's like they just threw a straw on you, and we're like, all right, we're just yeah. going to chow on you for a while. And don't get your information from people whose paranormal references are Jimmy Stewart movies, because she was going by the movie Harvey, where he had a very friendly puka. And uh, and then it just got yucky. Um, but I think that was the place it went wrong, is when I was like, oh, hey, what's your, hey, puka. what are you doing? You know, um, and with a name like that, who wants to talk? I to know, anymore? I know. And there's it feels pictures. like you're playing Pokemon Go. You know, that is one of the things in that, isn't it? Who cut you? Yeah, there's okay, a bunch of them. Pikachu. But um, so that was so that was fairies. But now there's elementals. There's all kinds of other things, which I think we're we got to watch our time on this. Um, but I but there, there's so much out there now. This may be in this story. I may not have right. But somebody used to say, when I first knew you, but, uh, but I was hanging out, someone said, Tommy has so much protection in his house that there's something that walks around <laughs> that has black and white stripes. Oh, there were, there were a couple. Because um, that's when, like in that apartment specifically, I did a lot of ritual work in there, a lot. I mean, I, since getting married, it's a little harder to do ritual work with the wife. No offense, Jen. It's just... Uh, <laughs> It's it, it, you, you start feeling a little self conscious about all the invocations being said out loud and the candles right. and the robe, which I get made fun of regularly for my robe. Aww. So uh, come on, I love you, Jen. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so there's you, you. If Hugh Hefner can do it, Tom Durant. Well, can different do robe, it. different oh, okay. type of. Like, I'm talking about an actual monk's robe. Oh, with a hood not, and everything. Yeah, not a not a Hugh Hefner. I'm gonna smoke my pipe by the fire <laughs> kind of robe. Um, anyway, so yeah, I, part of what I did was I did. Um, a lot of, uh, they're not conjuring rituals. It's, it's more of divine intervention prayers to ask for help. But also I did a lot of work with creating tulpa energy or poltergeist energy. Um, in chaos magic, they call them servitors, which is just as it's manifested from my energy and from available energies that I pull together and you make it into a, a semi sentient being that, that is got, it has a purpose. And then, you Don't know, try this at home, kids. No, no, no. And at a certain point, you, you put an end date to it when you're doing your intention for, for building it together. And so the end date was set for when I moved out, and that way it would just disperse the energies. Ah, so it kept so it just kept your place. Yeah, oh. locked down. I mean, uh, there was an individual who stayed at my place who is a less than desirable human being, uh, but I gave him a place to crash for about a week or two, and he regularly saw them anytime he'd go near my bedroom. Oh. And it's like, well, why were you near my bedroom? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Interesting. obviously, like, they were doing their job. See, because people always think everything's, you know, light and angels. And um, I know there's something around here that wears a monk's outfit that Jen saw before I did. And it's positive. Yeah. It's I mean, a, they're not all bad. It's no, not like right. everything dead is bad. It's just, they're, you know, again, the, there may be a purpose here we don't even know. And just try not to make things you can't see mad. Yeah. Yeah, don't piss them off. That's a good rule in general. Even on the internet, don't make things mad that that you people mad that you can't see. You've just offended every troll on the internet <laughs> ever. <laughs> I had my first troll. Okay, really, I did, and they went after me on the ghost stuff, and it was very strange because he said that's what they chose. Yes, I know, <laughs> and they um, they said uh, I can't remember. He said something about. You got me fired, and I was on a show with you, and and I decimated you that ghosts are not real. And I, I never like if somebody gets 
that way on a sh- like I'll always just back off and let them take the lead. I never I'm not going to fight with anybody about this, and I'm not yeah. going to get mad. And also, I w- I just said, dude, I don't think I've ever had the power to get anyone fired. And then I kind of figured it out. Um, and you're like, oh, I did. And then he kept making up more stories, and I was like, okay, I uh, well, good. I just blocked him because I was like, I don't understand what that does. Well, you can't talk sense in anybody if they're that angry and enraged, and they live in that for so long. Uh, there's they're, they're just steeped in it. They're not going to get out of it. Right, that. right. And um, all. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to um, I know people are going to scream at me for ending this fabulous um, podcast now, but don't uh, troll her for it. Don't troll me for it. And uh, hopefully Tom will be back again. Uh, we'll use Zencaster when you're in Washington or hopefully Tom and I will be on the road. Yeah, that would be better. So um, I buy can. Buy our show. Yes. Buy I, my actually, buy Karen's show. I'm just, I'm, I'm literally riding coattails. I'm, I'm going to be surfing her coattails through this whole thing. <laughs> Whatever. Go, what, eat, what, do you know any ghost hunters with their own demonologists on staff? Do you know anyone? No, I don't think you do. Yep. That is fascinating information. And jokes. And jokes. So, uh, well, Tom, I can't thank you enough. Tell them uh, any place they want to follow you, Twitter or Facebook or um, Freedom of the Pack. Should they go look there to try and get your documentary? you call it uh yeah well uh i i guess the production company that uh we started was uh, or is greater earth media and you can go to greater com, and that has some of our projects and our, our reel that we just put together um based on some of the stuff we did this past year but yeah feel free to go on there email me at tommy d at tommy d.com that's one m so it's t-o-m-y-d at t-o-m-y-d dot com and yeah, well, I'm, I still I still help people. I don't do as much uh, cases as I used to because it's time consuming. It's really hard. It takes it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and you have to also be really on your game and constantly vigilant. And uh, you know, with the side business, the day job, the m- moving to Washington, and everything else, it's been uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a difficult time to manage cases. Right. So, but I, I can always try to refer you out to people if if you have questions. I can try to answer the questions or refer you to somebody who knows better. And you don't work between. November and the no, I don't do cases starting like mid November up until the new year. And and the reason for that is the energy is always makes things worse. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter what you do. I've always found that it has made things absolutely worse. And I've, I've talked to a lot of people in this field who do this and say the same exact thing. It's like, yeah, just, there's no point. Um, the energies are very strange. It's, also, like in a lot of our country, it's a darker time because, you know, the winter solstice, it, less light, and um, that does affect things and also people's moods. And, and so it's just usually I won't do anything. I'll give people some some tips to manage things during that time and then help deal with it afterwards. And we're going to get into that with another episode with Tommy mm. about managing and protection and all kinds of stuff. And also, um, there is still a website. I know you guys don't go to it much, but it's called uh, the Paranormal Consultation Network. Yeah, that, that's still around. Um, it's still around. And also, you know what? My friends are running that. Um, the Huffmans, they still run that. And that's a great resource. It has a lot of book uh, opportunities for people who are looking to learn. Like Chris Penchak's book we were talking about earlier, uh, Witch's Shield. Um, there's a lot of books we'll recommend. They're all on that website. There's also a lot of tips and, and tools like, uh, you know, what stones to use for things, what oils to look at, you know, different things like that that are, are useful. And that's uh, Paranormal Concert, Consultation Network dot org. Dot org. And lastly, uh, Tommy has a, um, from your podcast with Dave Harvey, who we have on this show, mm-hmm. um, called Altered States. You still have some episodes up on iTunes that are I think fabulous. they're all up there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And those... How many were there all together? There weren't that many. No, we did, oh God, we did about four seasons and I, I mean, I'm going to guess there's at least, at least 25 to, and they're great. to 40 episodes. They're great. Well, I mean, varying degrees. They're not as good as, as yours, but okay. <laughs> um, varying degrees of okay. A lot of good information for sure. Uh, some fart jokes uh, when we were at Dave's house <laughs> and, uh, you know, some other fun, quirky things. We've had you on a few times too, because uh, Karen, I think I was the paranormal comedian. Is she, that how we met? Yeah, well, yeah, we <laughs> met, we met because you came, you, you came and you were going to do these uh, skits for us and, and I couldn't get my stuff together to give you enough head time on it. And so we only <laughs> ended up doing two segments and then I was like, I don't have time for the podcast. Too many cases. Cause I was overrun with cases at the time. And then oddly enough, we're sort of in the same spot. We're Full all circle. still doing the same thing. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> So nothing changes, which is good and good. Good. I'll, I'll take that. And then uh, don't forget, everybody check out Paranormal Karen. Oh, thank you. It, that's my like weekly laugh. I love <laughs> watching your posts. Uh, the mummies were great. Thanks. The Puppet Museum creeps me out. Um, yeah. But 
or is it, or, uh, it was a fire museum of ven- history. Of, it was the paranormal history of ventriloquism, and yeah. some ventriloquist uh, society found it and posted it, which kind of made me happy. Like they didn't feel like I was making fun of That's them because I didn't mean to. It's creepy at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> but they're all great, and Karen's awesome. So please keep helping her spread her word and uh, get out there and get our show. Thanks, everybody. All right, so we will have Tom back. I know you're already mad. I'm ending this. Um, thank you for listening. Thanks to producer Mike. Thanks to Jim. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, thanks to Joe Palin for our music. Please, if you have any ghost stories or questions, um, email them to me at paranormalkaren at gmail.com. We have our monthly episode where me and my sister read your ghost stories. That's a blast. Please leave me a review on iTunes. Please follow Paranormal Karen, the funny series on YouTube. You can find it all at my website, karenrontowski.com or paranormalkaren.com. And thanks for listening. We like to find the lighter side of the dark side. Have a great week.